little fireside chat today with the side fire. That's why we call it the fireside chat. Might make this a regular thing or it might just be a thing and then it's like, that wasn't a very good thing. Let's never do that again. Definitely that will be the outcome if my chair catches on fire. So if you see like my chair starting to smoke a little bit behind me, make sure you let me know. But nonetheless, we're going to do Fireside Chat, episode one. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. Right. For the record, you ain't trying to grow them stuff for you. Right. For the record, so, like um, me going all the way. This is it, they're comics that keep coming up and circulating around. And one of them is, well, is this goalie specific? Is this goal is this goalie specific that we're doing? Um and the answer is yes, I guess. So let me explain what I mean. Goalie specific doesn't mean goalie similar. Goalie specific doesn't mean, and this is where a lot of um, trainers or maybe coaches make a mistake, is they think, oh, well, goalie specific off ice training is training that looks just like what we do on the ice, but we do it off ice. That's goalie specific off ice training. But that's not really the, the idea, or at least it's not my idea, I should say. My idea is what is the best training we can do to help this goalie stop more pucks? Because that's, that's the ultimate, that's my ultimate life's work. And, and that's your mission as a goalie. You want to stop more pucks. So I don't care if an exercise looks like something that you do on the ice, if it helps you stop more pucks, if it helps you keep more pucks out of your net, it could look completely different from anything you, that you have to do when you're in front of your net. So that's one thing. And, it, and this is a pendulum that swings both ways. So it swings, you know, from one extreme, some of you probably have coaches that you work with or even strength coaches who say, oh, you don't need to lift weights. You know, that'll make you bulky. That'll decrease your flexibility. You just do body weight. Or if you do use weights, make sure you do high reps so you don't lose your flexibility. That is a myth, period, full stop, boom. Let's never talk about it again, <laughs> okay? Doing body weight only training or doing lightweight high reps doesn't, isn't goalie specific. Uh, then well, there are other strength coaches and even some of my mentors who will say, really goalies don't have to do anything different from skaters, like, no. Uh, they already think they're so special, <laughs> why would we give them special exercises to make them think they're even more special? And I can, I know where they're coming from and it gets into a little bit of semantics, but here's the thing. A goalie needs to be mobile, which is a combination of stability and flexibility. So just having flexibility actually can put a goalie at risk for injury. Just being stable, you know, means <laughs> that you're rigid and you can't move. So what we need is a goalie who is flexible and mobile and has control in all these ranges of motion, which is really hard because a lot of the muscles that control those intricate positions and the internal rotation and they're, they're not big prime movers. And so, and they're being worked in a way that really isn't how, whatever you believe in a creator or evolution. It really, nobody had like goaltending in mind when they created <laughs> this. Okay. So trying to figure that out. But you also need to just to be strong, to be powerful, to be agile, and to have stamina. And those things are learned in a progression. Very much like if we were gonna, my guitar is not in this room right now, but you know, if I'm learning guitar, I wanna play, well, I wanna play where the streets have no name, sound just like the edge. I'm not going to start with, I don't even know what it is, reverb or how, I don't know how he does it, but I'm not going to start with that. I'm going to start with row, row, row your boat, uh, you know, blowing in the wind, which I would love to be able to play blowing in the wind actually like perfectly. I'd like to also be able to play John Denver, like a lot of John Denver really, really well, but it, I digress. Oh, John Denver. How we miss you. May you rest in peace. Um, so. <laughs> You're gonna have to start with the basics and build up. So 
Is doing a barbell front squat goalie specific? Yes, if the goalie needs more leg strength um, and, you know, and that's where they're at in their development. If a goalie can't even do a proper body weight squat, then what's goalie specific for them is going to be learning to do a body weight squat with proper mechanics so that they're using the right muscles in the right way. And then they'll build up to a front squat, let's say, maybe a front squat with chains, then maybe they'll go to a single leg squat, you know, and they'll just, they'll just follow that progression to build strength and stability and movement patterns and, and overall athleticism. Is doing a vertical jump specific for a goalie? Well, they don't usually have to vertical jump when they're in the net, but do they need to ha have to explosively extend at their hip, knee, and ankle? Do they need to have that nice powerful push? Do they need to have vertical power, like maybe even when they're recovering from their knees to their feet? Yes. So is it broken down to exactly what they need to do on the ice? No. But is it building some of the qualities and characteristics that they need to be successful? Yes. Then again, we follow a progression so that it might be, okay, learning proper vertical jump mechanics. So they really learn how to use their hip extensors. Well, then it might be half kneeling vertical jump. So that takes it from, okay, I'm in my butterfly, I've recovered one leg, and now I have to push explosively. Again, it's not going to be straight up and down on the ice, but off the ice, we're going to work that element. Then off the ice, we might go to, okay, now we're in tall kneeling. We're going to do a knee recovery and a lateral push into a hop and stick. See how it gets more and more goalie similar, but always thinking, what's our outcome? Okay, we're trying to develop explosive power, triple extension, nice, strong, uh, stable torso. So I would say if I had to make a generalization on it, I would say about 70% of the training that a goalie does and their teammates will do will be the same or very similar. But it's that, you know, it's maybe 70 or 80%. It's that 20 or 30% that we need to play around with to make sure, yeah, are those stabilizers learning to work in those awkward positions? Is there some more emphasis on frontal plane movement the way a goalie needs it? Because a lot of a skater's movement is sagittal plane, is forward and back. Whereas a goalie has to rely a little bit more on lateral movement. So are you taking that into account? Are you taking into account the fact that a goalie is a repeat sprinter who doesn't get the benefit of, you know, working hard a shift and then coming off? They need to sort of get their active recovery, uh, you know, just as the play develops. So they have a little bit of a broader spectrum than a skater. So those are the things you need to think about when it's goalie specific. And then it all fits into this envelope of what does this athlete need? What's specific for an NHL goaltender that I train is going to be very different from what's specific for a 15 year old goalie who really hasn't had much coaching in the gym yet. So, you know, their program will probably look less goalie specific than that NHL players because they still need this whole foundation of movement. You know, we can't sort of put the cart before the horse. And, and again, that's a huge mistake to sort of skip. Oh, well, I saw, you know, an NHL goalie do this and that. So that's what I should probably do. They have built up over years and years and years to be able to do that type of training so that that's really where, you know, those advanced exercises is just to fill those little gaps they still have. Whereas when you're younger, you know, your gaps are huge. So you need to, to take care and put those building blocks in place first. So I hope that makes sense. I hope I didn't just confuse you. I hope my chair isn't on fire behind me. I don't think it is. I don't smell anything, but, um, so this is a little fireside chat. This is the first one we've done and give me a thumbs up or a double tap or subscribe or comment or like, or, uh, there's, I think there's a bell now on the YouTube that you can push a bell or something, <laughs> but do any of those things if you like this video and we'll do a few more little fireside chats. See ya.